Thank you very much, uh, John and Brendan. That was really, wow. Um, our next speaker is Elizabeth Kerwin, who's Assistant Keeper at the National Library of Ireland. And her paper is Village in the City, Collaborating on National Photographic and Archive Exhibitions. So Elizabeth. You're still here. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Thank you for that introduction, Elaine. What I want to do is tell you a little bit about the Photographic Archive and what our, our business uh, objectives are. And then I'm going to move on to tell you about Village in the City, a particular exhibition that we were collaborating on some, some years back, um, but actually continues um, in, in, in a form we hadn't expected um, at the outset. So. Um, Welcome to the National Library's National Photographic Archive. It is part of the National Library of Ireland, and the, the building is in Meeting House Square in Temple Bar. The complex it's in is dedicated to photography, to still and moving images. The building itself is not owned by the National Library of Ireland. It's actually leased from Dublin City Council by the OPW for the National Library. The lease, as you can see, is a 35-year lease. Um, and it expires in 2035. So the terms and conditions of the lease are that the National Photographic Archive documents and preserves Ireland's photographic heritage, that it develops and makes the collections available, the photographic collections, that it provides for photographic exhibitions uh, as far as is practicable, and that it's receptive to um, cooperative projects in the Temple Bar area. So the collections in the NPA are huge. Um, it's the world's largest collection of photographs relating to Ireland. There are over five million photos. The photos date from the beginnings of photography, effectively in Ireland from the 1840s right up to the present. And their strongest uh, uh, um, constituent part is actually Irish photojournalism, some four and a half million items. So the collections essentially document the Irish experience, um, primarily in Ireland, but occasionally overseas as well. Uh, given the date span um, and the range of materials, we think we cover most photographic formats. Um, and in spite of the breadth of the collection, um, we, we know that there are uh, significant collection gaps. Um, the exhibitions that are organised by the National Library in the Photographic Archive are drawing largely from the collections in the NPA. The exhibitions themselves are free to visit. Um, the gallery is open seven days a week. Um, and the exhibitions are also available online. A number of them are available online. And we have travelled exhibitions as well. Our footfall is at least 65,000 annually, and um, most of those visitors we know are from overseas, so they're, they're once-off visitors. The footfall generates in the region of about 5 million to the local economy annually, so that's, um, that's quite a, an important thing to, to keep in mind when you're looking for sponsorship and partnership. Um, well, the exhibitions allow us to enter into new partnerships um, and allow us to reach out to new audiences, but um, the likes of Google Cultural Institute, of which the National Photographic Archive's three exhibitions were the first Irish representation on the Google Cultural Institute, have also drawn new audiences. So that's briefly a little bit about the NPA. So I want to introduce something now called N minus one. N minus one is um, it's a it's currently it's a Google Strategic Human Resource Management Strategy. And it's essentially where, when you have a crisis area, you appoint your able staff to that area, and then you further reduce the funding and the resourcing to that area. The idea is that um, this drives collaboration, uh, it drives innovation, and it drives a refocus on priorities, so it drives prioritization. Um, some years back, in 2010, the NPA was closed uh, in late December 2010. It was closed for almost a year, reopened in late 2011. And when it reopened, um, we had significantly reduced staff numbers. We didn't have an accessions budget, and we didn't have um, an exhibitions budget. So our emphasis on um, 
collaborating and innovating and reprioritizing, focused on increasing the number of donations to the NPA, developing existing exhibitions partnerships and exploring new partnerships, and also reconsidering the use of the National um, Photographic Archive Gallery. So some examples of the exhibition partnerships are, um, these are ones that I was engaged in um, between 2010 and 2015. Um, the Grad Show, um, an annual exhibition that we held with the DIT School of Photography uh, that ran up to 2015, um, and we grew that to also include uh, uh, three internships annually. Photo Ireland um, began its life uh, with exhibitions in the NPA, and that continued for the first four years of its existence. And like all good children who grew up, um, the Photo Ireland Festival also grew up and left home and has gone but not just uh, Dublin-based, but also national and, I gather, international as well. Um, in 2014, um, Gerry Andrews uh, from Limerick exhibited an exhibition called Shape by History um, in the National Photographic Archives, a tremendously popular exhibition. It, in an earlier form, it had exhibited in the Hunt Museum in Limerick. And in 2014, the um, Limerick City of Culture Year was uh, obviously based in Limerick, but um, the event in the National Photographic Archive was the only non-Limerick City culture uh, non-Limerick City of Culture event held um, outside of, of, of Limerick. In 2014, we also tried to reach to a new audience and a much younger audience, and we had an exhibition from um, the Belong To Youth Services Group Digital Archive. Belong To are the LGBTQ uh, Youth Services Support Group, um, and in fact, as a result of that, we have been the National Library has been promised the digital archive of uh, Belong To as well. So um, we also tried to increase the um, footfall within Ireland of the bilingual aspects of the Irish English thing. We'd never had a, a, a bilingual Irish English exhibition in the NPA before. So um, Pamela Debris um, had an exhibition on the Irish uh, Railway, Midland and Great Western Railway, um, and that was that was also draw that drew in a lot of new footfall as well. But the exhibition I really want to focus on today um, for the rest of the time is, is called Village in the City, and this was one that we collaborated with uh, the artist and photographer Jeanette Lowan in 2013. The collaboration was also with uh, Dublin City Council, and it was really to connect with the local community in which the NPA is situated. So that collaboration began around this particular photo. Um, I don't know why that keeps coming up, but um, um, Beach Boys, and this particular photo won the Taylor Wessing Portrait Photography Prize at the National Gallery in London in 2010. And essentially, Jeanette came into the reading room to work on an exhibition around the Pierce Street area, um, Pierce House in particular, and we didn't have a great deal um, for her to work on uh, for, the, for the kind of last 50 years. So we considered the idea of a possible exhibition to really grow the collections in the NPA um, and to, to bring out what uh, photos might have been held locally. So um, we suggested an, a Jeanette cut her teeth uh, with exhibitions. She hadn't had an exhibition at that point um, with the Photo Ireland Festival. So um, in 2012, she did submit um, an entry to the Photo Ireland Festival and in fact it was extremely successful. Um, I think we've lost transmission there. Um, and it was, um, it won the People's Choice Award um, for that for that year. So um, the exhibition itself then, um, that stimulated us into looking at that exhibition proposal for an exhibition in the NPA. And um, the exhibition itself was something we wanted to be focusing on a living exhibition, the, collect, the building of a living archive, um, and that the donation of that material would then come to the NPA. Um, we also wanted the exhibition to be a dual location exhibi uh, exhibition, um, in other words, between Pierce Flats and the uh, National Photographic Archive, and the exhibition had to serve as the main focal point for Heritage Week 
and for Culture Night in the NPA in 2013. And it also had to support the government initi initiative um, of the gathering um, in, in 2013. So um, what happened was that we, um, with any collaboration, we explored the, the match, uh, among other things. So um, it was really important to us that, um, firstly, that Jeanette Lowe was coming with a dowry, in other words, that she was self-supporting, um, that she could carry the cost of the exhibition, which was around about 20,000, um, for the, the initial parts of the exhibition. And her background uh, was in photography, marketing, and creative digital media. Um, her photography was award-winning, we established that, um, and very attractive. Um, but also critically, um, she had strong inroads into Pierce House. Um, her grandmother was one of the first residents of Pierce House. Um, her mother was reared there. And we were really sensitive to the fact that um, Pierce House uh, community is a very tightly knit community, a very private community, and we did not want to objectify uh, the, the community at Pierce House. We wanted to have them as partners with this exhibition on a, a kind of community basis, and so we were as sensitive as as, as it was humanly possible to be um, in taking that into account. From the perspective of the National Photographic Archive, where well, we actually had our own seat on the National Cultural Institutions Committee at the Mansion House and a very supportive uh, Lord Mayor, and in fact through that then we were able to raise half the cost of the exhibition, which was €10,000. Um, um, the Lord Mayor's just practically wrote a cheque, so that was, that was great. Um, we had also a very strong working relationship with Temple Bar Cultural Trust Arts Officer, so um, that was, that was a, a great support in this. And also, Dublin City Council were acutely aware of the pulling power of the NPA to draw people to the local area and the generation of that five million or so to the local economy. So they made available a flat in Pierce House for this due location exhibition. So the location of the um, exhibition, um, I don't know if this has a pointer, but essentially um, the red dot is Pierce House and the 18 minutes back is to um, Meeting House Square, which is where the NPA is situated. And when we set um, this idea of this due location exhibition and when we opened it and people from the community of Pierce House came in, they said that they passed the National Photographic Archive because they didn't think they were welcome there. They didn't think that there was anything of interest to them there. Um, and when they were passing by the National Photographic Archive, they were on their way to the, um, to the housing department in Dublin City Council, which is just a bit further along the river. So what we did was um, really something quite um, different for the National Photographic Archive. We changed the white color, the plain white color on the walls. Um, so we imported um, the Corporation Green Colour into the Photographic Archive, and you can see the, the Beach Boys there um, at the back. Um, we introduced uh, an artefact, um, which you can see at the back wall there, um, a 1950s regulation issue for all the um, apartment uh, flats in Pierce House. Um, Dublin City Council issued uh, a stove or a, a cooker, so this was reconstituted and Dublin City Council donated this uh, to the exhibition. Um, on the back wall there, uh, you can see where the beach is for Pierce House. It's in fact effectively the docklands. It's the basin, the canals, the, the river in the area, and the, the kids here are leaping off the industrial buildings in the area. Well, we introduced um, Heritage Grey as well, and these are volunteers from Pierce House uh, painting the wall, breaking that um, stark white, plain white colour um, that's the aesthetic of the award-winning architectural design of the NPA. I'm sure the architects would have been horrified, O'Donnell to me. Um, anyway, um, we created, th the main focal point, when you look into the NPA, you're drawn into uh, the, 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 the space at the back, which is, um, uh, it's, it's one of, it, it's a little recessed area behind the, the reception desk. Um, and we created this as the, the kind of living memory space. So. Jeanette Lowe's contemporary photographs are on the wall around this, and on the back wall is the, is the Heritage Grey Strip. 
Now, this was a living archive. It was a living exhibition. So the photographs on the back wall were changeable. So we invited the uh, uh, community of Pierce House to put up the photographs that they wanted to put up and indeed take them down if they wished. But we also, um, one of uh, the things we did with Jeanette Lowe was um, set up a, 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 a Facebook page for the exhibition. And the photographs, with the permission of the community of Pierce House and the owners of the photographs, th the photographs were uploaded to Facebook. Now, we also imported um, this idea, this notion of a, a, a memory tree into the photographic archive. In Pierce House, there was a tree around which people gathered, so to chat, to share stories, um, to you know, just generally meet and hang out. And so the idea was here that it, 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 it was the memory tree and you can see how, um, th uh, uh, this is culture night, um, how engaged people are with, with that space. Um, the, throughout the exhibition, we also ran uh, a looped um, projection onto the back wall um, with the older photographs from, um, from Pierce House. Now, as well as the Corporation Green, we, um, we decided we were going to um, do something radically different for a national cultural institution. In, um, we copy the graffiti from the photograph, you know, the Beach Boys photograph, onto the, the green of the wall. You can see some of it. But we also were inviting people to come and add to the graffiti. And in fact, very few people took this up. The idea was maybe a step too far that you could write on the walls of a national cultural institution. But on opening night, our very supportive Lord Mayor went into the, got into the spirit, well into the spirit of the occasion. And um, he decided he was going to write up his, um, his favorite football team's name, which was Arsenal FC. And um, being the sporting Lord Mayor, Oshin Quinn, that he is, um, or was uh, Lord Mayor at the time, um, he paused after the first four letters, Arsenal FC. And you can see um, the press was absolutely delighted with this. And uh, he, he, did, he did remember how to spell it after that. He, he, he completed it. So, um, the exhibition ran from August to October 2013 and was a tremendous success. Um, we had over 17,000 on foot visitors in the NPA alone. Um, the local businesses reported to Dublin City Council that they were delighted with it because people were spending, there was an increased footfall in the area, people were spending money. Uh, the dual location walking tours that Dublin City Council organised were also very successful, particularly on Culture Night, and brought um, spend to the area as well. Pierce House community reported that there, you know, a boost in the feeling of, of pride in in showing their um, their community to uh, to to outsiders effectively. Um, now, I'm going to come back to the, um, the Facebook page um, uh, on the last slide, so just bear with me on that for the moment. But um, this unique collaboration um, between the NPA, Dublin City Council, the artist, and via the artist to Pierce uh, House community, um, in fact, is a model that has continued. Um, Dublin City Council is currently ploughing, I think, €600,000 into uh, supporting initiatives and encouraging initiatives between the national cultural institutions and Trinity and the local communities as well as you know in, in a form of engagement. So the exhibition was widely reviewed. Um, this is uh, just uh, just as you can see a regular Google search. Um, this was the Irish Times uh, uh, website, so um, you can search that yourself if if you want to. And what we realised was that. Um, well, certain things were really not going to work any longer in the NPA with this type of exhibition, that you couldn't really have a didactic exhibition because it had had no place with this, that um, what people were looking for was something that was dynamic, it was um, experiential, in other words, something to experience, so that idea of collaborativeness, that idea of sharing, that sense of community. And something that was connected, so connecting not just um, in terms of people connecting um, face to face, but also um, connecting online and connecting through Facebook. So this um, this was um, something that we we did in partnership with Dublin City Council, with the artist Jeanette Lowe, uh, with the local community in Pierce House, and. Um, this daring to dream or, uh, and, and doing so collaboratively and collaboratively delivering inclusiveness was, was a product um, of this exhibition. 
So I want to end um, with, with, with this particular slide because where the exhibition is at now, well, it, in fact, it's, the exhibition itself has just closed in um, San Jose in California, uh, where President Michael D. Higgins opened it um, in April, which it closed last weekend. Um, the, the issues that it raised for us, um, well, you know, we ticked our boxes in terms of um, d developing and making the collections uh, of the library or incoming collections um, accessible and a set of the photographs of Jeanette Lowe's photography will be donated to the Photographic Archive. She's working on that. Um, and we also, you know, encourage local cooperation um, and we provided an exhibition. But I had hoped um, that we could also add to the collections of the Photographic Archive with the you know, with collections from the uh, residents, the, communi the community of Pierce House. But, um, you know, as um, Ivy Anderson said yesterday, you, you must respect um, local context um, um, and local autonomy. And what people are happier to do is, in fact, upload those photographs of, that they hold to the Pierce House Facebook page and this provides um, a place for engagement it, um, and uh, exchange and a sense of communities fostered and continued on the Facebook page. And you can see, uh, this is a snap I took just about 10 days ago, um, the conversation on the right hand side there. Um, I was really interested in what um, Susan Gibbons said this morning about um, the fact that libraries now, um, the emphasis is perhaps more on providing access rather than ownership. And I'd like to finish up on that now because it, it, to me it's still, it's something I'm still trying to get my head around. Thank you very much, thank you.